Hi folks, I've asked the uh, Deputy Chief Medical Officer, Dr Jenny Harris, to come here to Downing Street. Uh, Jenny, perhaps you could tell everybody what are the symptoms of COVID-19 coronavirus? So the, the main symptoms that people present with are fever, usually quite a high fever, and a cough. Uh, but we do get people coming with sore throats, uh, shortness of breath. And what should we do when we, when we have, those symptoms, have those symptoms? So the first thing is we want to take ourselves away from other people, just mm. in case we have it and prevent anybody catching it from us. Uh, but the important thing is that people who feel unwell and have symptoms stay out of the way of the health services to start with till we work out what the problem is. So that's our advice to people who think that they may have the symptoms of, of coronavirus is to stay at home, is that, is that right? Is to stay at home. Effectively what you're doing is uh, isolating yourself, taking you away from other people just to reduce that risk of transmitting a disease, of infecting somebody else. People think they've heard this lots of times, but could you explain one more time why washing your hands is so important? So there are two sorts of things we should do really. Washing hands is one and catching coughs and sneezes with a tissue is mm. the other. But for the washing the hands, uh, this virus spreads with droplet spread um, and with what we call fomite. So effectively if the virus drops on the surface um, and we pick it up and then we touch our eyes, our mouth or our nose, mm. we can become infected. So of course if you wash your hands very frequently and thoroughly, for at least 20 seconds and much more frequently than we normally do, you will then reduce that risk of infecting yourself. So it's a really good protective mechanism. And, and who are the most vulnerable people in your family or in society that we should particularly avoid uh, so getting infected? It's still quite early days in our understanding of the disease. Children seem to be, um, they get infections but not particularly badly. The ones we're really worried about are the, are the older people. So those uh, 70, 80, uh, and above, and people who've got chronic conditions, so things like heart disease um, or some respiratory disease. Because the reality is that the most people won't experience a, a major disease, it will be a mild, moderate uh, illness, but, but it can be more dangerous for people who are much older who have pre-existing conditions. Yes, so we really do need to look after our elderly people, our relatives or neighbours perhaps, and help them stay at home, um, helping them with shopping and that sort of thing if they need to stay uh, away from other people. But uh, for most people, it really is going to be quite a mild disease. Most people get a few symptoms for the first uh, two or three days, and they're usually over it by a week. Uh, t tell us about the value of wearing face masks. You see face masks uh, around the face. Is there any point to that? Uh, if a healthcare professional hasn't advised you to wear a face mask, it's usually quite a bad idea. People tend to leave them on. Uh, they contaminate the, the face mask and then wipe it over something. So it's really not a good idea and doesn't help. However, if you are a patient and you've been diagnosed with symptoms uh, with coronavirus, then uh, it, you may be provided with a face mask then, and that's mm -hmm. a good thing. You're protecting other people in your vicinity. And it's noticeable that the, there are some countries where they've banned big sporting events and they've, they've stopped mass gatherings of one kind or another. Tell us why, so far, the medical advice in this country is not to... To do that. In this country we have expert um, modellers looking at what we think will happen with the virus um, and we've looked at what sorts of interventions might help manage this as we go forward, push the peak of the epidemic forward um, and in general those sorts of events, big gatherings, are not seen, uh, seen to be something which is going to have a big effect so we don't want to disrupt people's lives on doing that. Right, there's obviously people under a lot of pressure, politicians, governments around the world, a lot of pressure to be seen to act so they they may do things that aren't necessarily dictated by the, by the science. So, as a professional, I'm absolutely delighted that we are following the science and the evidence. There's, uh, there are other things that we can do in this country, and the timing of that is really yes. important. We need to get the timing, firstly, on uh, helping to stop the spread, continue to contain the virus as much as we can, but then particularly for our elderly people to find exactly the right point to give them advice. And the timing is very important, is it? Critical, absolutely critical. If we put it in too early, we'll just pop up with another epidemic peak later on. Uh, and if we leave it too late, it, uh, it will be, we, we'll have missed the boat. But because we have such brilliant modelers, we, we're pretty confident we will know the right point. We've got very clear advice about when we should intervene. And uh, that's exactly what I think we should do, which is what we're obviously advising you as the government. Thank you very much, well, Dr. Jenny Harris, the Deputy Chief Medical Officer. Thank you very much for coming along to Dining Street this afternoon. Thank you.